Hey, it's Matt with Mom with the Mats. Welcome. I'm doing a uh, kind of a uh, stash review of, or let's say a haul review of what I got at MossCon. Uh, this is part two, so welcome if you've seen part one. Uh, this is part two of what I got at MossCon. Uh, MossCon, again, is the Missouri, uh, Missouri Ozark Scale Specialist. They're a group of uh, modelers from southwest Missouri in the Springfield Joplin uh, let's see, Branson area of uh, Missouri. So uh, we all came down from different areas of Missouri and even Arkansas and a couple other places around the Midwest uh, to uh, come to this con. Uh, vendors were great. And uh, let's see, the last video you saw were from the kit uh, raffle. These are some of the ones that I actually purchased myself. So uh, you, we can check these out. So with further ado, let's swing down to the Mat One camera. There we go. First one. Let's see, let's do this one here. Pretty excited about this one. Got this one from a vendor. I have never done uh, armor. Let's see, the only armor I've ever done is the uh, two tanks I've uh, had previous. I've done the M1 Abrams and I've done the uh, Ki-88 uh, Korean tank. Uh, but armor is not really my thing. But I was like, again, uh, for a Mojo switch or a Mojo builder uh, to check it out. So I got this. Uh, 155 millimeter M2 long tom uh, cannon. Uh, it is 172nd scale, so it is tiny compared to most armor, which is 135th scale. But uh, I got this one just to you know give it a try. Again, not many parts, relatively tiny, relatively old. It's from uh, it is Hasegawa, so that's what really drove me to that because I do like Hasegawa kind of kits from the from older years because they fit together still nicely back even back then. So this is a Hasegawa mini craft. Uh, so again, U.S. Army 155 millimeter M2 long tom uh, cannon. So got that one. Now dealing with armament still, uh, Hasegawa for the longest time did not put any missiles or bombs or anything in their model kits. And so if you had, to, if you wanted to put anything on them, you had to make sure you had them. And Hasegawa was nice enough to make uh, armor sets, not armor as in like tanks, but armor as in like weapons so here we have uh, one see that nice glare on that so box has seen better days but we got uh, a whole bunch of different bombs we got Mavericks looks like uh, some mark 82 snake eyes here I might be wrong on that but just in case uh, some targeting pods some other dumb bombs some smart bombs uh, let's see some rails and injectors up here but uh, got that one and then I can do all three of these at the same time. Pull these off to the side. First one we got is the aircraft set letter A, which are US bombs and tow target systems. So we have all your different bombs here. These are all dumb bombs that just fall, no guidance or anything like that. Uh, let's see, some injectors or uh, some ejectors. And here are the target toad targets. I've never seen those before. So it does not come with the F-16, unfortunately, but it does come with all of these in it. So those, and they're all 148 scale. So if I want to change out or add or add to a diorama, possibly, I have the bombs to do so. So that is from the Hasegawa set. This is X4, X-48-1, also known as weapon set A. So I picked up that. Next one is weapon set B. This is U.S. guided bombs and rocket launchers. So you see all the different rockets and bombs here. We got some bull pups. We got some Phoenix for the F-8 or F-14. Different smart bombs here, and some other guided ones as well. So and again, targeting pods as well and ejectors. So again, doesn't come with the F-4, but comes with everything else. And again, Hasegawa X-48-2, the U.S. guided bombs and rocket launchers. So we have that one. And to complete the set for this one, we have the Aircraft Weapons C. So here we have all the U.S. missiles and gun pods. So you've got Sidewinders. Holy cow. All of these are different versions of the Sidewinder right here. You have some Sparrow ones here. Uh, let's see. We've got some Mavericks here. Uh, let's see. I don't remember that one there. Uh, we got some bigger Sparrows back here. And again, Ejectors and gun pods over here and here. So as we got that, so that is aircraft weapons C, US missiles and gun pods, X-48-3. So we got that one as well. So I am set with armament. So 
And going over here, the last one over here that I'm gonna cover in this video. Let's see, I got the D3A2 Achi Type 99 Model 22 Val. Let's see, is a dive bomber uh, in one 70 second scale. Uh, this is from Fujimi. I have bought, I have some, I've built some Fujimi kits before. They're pretty good. Uh, let's see, I'm excited because this completes my Pearl Harbor set of aircraft for the Japanese. I have a Zero, I have a Kate, which is the torpedo plane, and this is the Val, the dive bomber. So I've got all three of those because I was able to go to, to Pearl Harbor and actually see where the USS Arizona was and all of that. So it was very moving. And I was like, just as a tribute to just the whole thing, I wanted to get the aircraft and I wanted to get the Japanese ones first because there was a P-40 Warhawk and that pretty much took care of what they were using during that time period for the United States. So uh, I have that, so I was really excited about that. So there's my next one. And uh, let's see, let's get a couple more here. Let's see, been looking for one of these for a long time. This is the Tamiya or Tamiya German Panther. I'm not, well, let's see, Panzerkampfwagen uh, 5. Let's see, Panther Ausgefuhren uh, uh, version, yeah. Type G, early version. So, uh, here's what I'm gonna do with it though. I've always wanted to do this. That's why I've been looking for a Panther tank. I saw a kid do this in the Fine Scale Modeler magazine and I was like, I wanna so do this. I'm gonna paint it pink to have a Pink Panther. I grew up in the year, time period where, let's see, Pink Panther was known for Owens Carning uh, uh, fiberglass insulation and the movies and all that. And I want to do a pink panther. So if I get this, get to this one, I will do this tank, but I will paint it pink. So I'm excited about that. So a pink panther. So and lastly, with this group here, I got a Fujimi McDonnell Douglas F15. I always buy F15 kits. Love F15 kits. But the thing about this one, I will pop this one open and show you. I'm really excited. F-15s have a, F-15 kits have a problem. Most of them do, okay? Have a problem with joining the forward fuselage with the rear fuselage. There's a really nasty seam that is right there. And it's hard to fit. It just doesn't fit right. Sometimes you have a step. Sometimes you have one where it's the other way around. So you have a trough and they just don't join up nicely. Here's why I like this kit. Being how old it is, you see what I see? It's already joined together. Forward fuselage, rear fuselage, it's already joined. So I'm excited about building this kit and see how it does. I've only built a few Fujimi kits. They, they are good, but uh, I'm just kind of interested to see. I've never done a Fujimi F-15, and so here I have one. So we'll see how it goes, okay? I like the Academy one, the Academy one, the Academy one in one seventy second scale is already joined as well. Uh, so I'm liking that. So we're gonna see how this all turns out. So this is what kind of got me jazzed about this kit. I love building F-15s, so. It's almost time to start one up again because I'm finishing one off. So, but yeah, so there we go, that one. So we have that. All right, that's it for part two. So uh, join me in just a little bit. And uh, as always, I'm Matt. Model on, guys. See you in part three.